remove wheel, remove caliper, remove pads, remove adapter bracket. Um, before I removed the disc though, I did. There is a hole in the disc itself that you, uh, there's a plug in there. So you remove that plug, it's just rubber. And then you spin the disc around until you see the adjusting star, which is on the bottom. And what you do is you just get in there with a flathead screwdriver and you back it off until the shoe is back down and then you can remove the disc. And then once the disc is off, do the same thing, clean up the hub or the spindle and uh, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna be uh, just cleaning these up and getting all this, this dirt and stuff off and rust and uh, I'll be servicing these up, gonna paint them, gonna remove the uh, slider pins and uh, get all the dirt and stuff off of there. New lube on the inside, recondition the rubbers, brand new clips. Will be uh, nothing wrong with these. They're just, uh, they got some rust built up on them and new ones are nice and clean. So once that's done, we'll be reassembling in the reverse order that we took it apart. Well, we've got our bracket all cleaned up here and uh, painted. And now we're just installing these clips. If you do paint this, make sure you don't put too much paint underneath of these clips or it has a tendency to constrict the brake pads and they do not move freely. Now, uh, there is a difference in these pins. Although they are the same length, one has a rubber and one does not. So it is important to note which side they come out of and they vary from side to side. Now on this van in particular, on the driver's side, which is the side, uh, the rubber comes out of the right side bore. So very important. Uh, we have reconditioned our rubbers, nice and clean now. And uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of lube on the inside where this seats against. That's gonna help keep any moisture from uh, possibly intruding into the the bore itself and it also helps aid in installation so we'll just squish that down in there and then um, once we get this installed uh, what we can do is lube up our pin and uh, we'll slide that in there it's important that we get this thing installed properly sometimes they get uh, bound up and uh, and that's not good either, so see it's giving me a bit of grief here. Slide the pin. Yeah. Nope. It's just stuck sideways. Alright, so. We've gotten that one in. You just have to work it around and you'll know if it's not in there properly. There, that one went in nice. Now, I uh, just use the solid one to check to make sure that everything's good. Looks like it's good. I'm going to put uh, a little bit more of this lubricant just on the edge here where the rubber boot seals against the pin. Um, this is a silicone based uh, brake grease also doubles as a dielectric grease do not use petroleum based products for these slide pins because these rubbers have a tendency to swell up and then the seal becomes compromised and once it's compromised moisture gets inside rust forms and the pin sees when that happens uh, your brakes sort of uh, only use one pad so we'll get this uh, one installed on this side. Everything's moving nice and freely. There we go, we're uh, ready to install that onto the vehicle now. Okay, we are now installing the disc. Um, take note, when you put this thing on, it's important to have the holes line up. You see that's wrong. So we have to figure out which hole does that go to. Just like that. So we've got a cut out right here, and that's where that hole's gonna line up. And we need that to line up 
so that we can access our adjuster star that's underneath of there so we can set up our emergency brakes. Very we now install our caliper adapter bracket, 17 millimeter bolts. All right, we're now gonna torque these bolts here to 65 foot-pounds. Try to push this piston back by hand. Beautiful, we didn't even have to get the tool out. I love it. Okay, now we get our brake pads. We're gonna apply a little bit of uh, anti-seize on the ends of them for lubrication. And then we will slide those in and install our caliper. So we have our pads prepped, ready to go. Don't forget to put these squealer tabs slash springs on there. Um, now, as far as the piston on the caliper goes, there is a, a pushback kit that's designed to do that. You could also use uh, C-clamp or channel lock pliers. Uh, if you use those other two methods besides the pushback tool, I recommend sticking an old pad in front of the piston before you push it back to avoid uh, damaging the piston. So now we're going to install these brake pads and uh, take note the orientation of where these squealer tabs go. You see how they have a bit of spring to them? So what's going to happen is if you put them in this direction, uh, which way do the rotors go when you're driving forwards? They're going counterclockwise and the spring will keep the brake pads pushed down like this. And when you apply the brakes, the rotor drags the pad upwards into the bracket. And what happens is it causes a clicking noise. So we want to make sure that our springs are facing down and that way it's keeping the brake pads pushed up at all times into the adapter. And when you hit the brakes, it cannot move at all any more up. So we do not get a clicking noise. And uh, see if we can get these things situated in here. I cannot see what I'm doing. like that. Go ahead and install our caliper. They have springs? These ones do not have springs. Good. Yep. Now we'll get these bolts started. They get torqued down to 20 foot pounds for those of you that are torquing your hardware. All right, just set in the uh, torque wrench now. 20 foot pounds. I do have a wrench here from Olsa Tools. It's a very slim wrench and it's specifically designed for different tasks, but it works very nice to hold these slider pins, keeps them from spinning. And then last but not least, Install our bleeder screw cover. And just like that, we're all set to go. Put the wheel on, torque wheels down to 76 foot pounds. Oh, we already set that up. I guess we got a video there. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna adjust our emergency brakes. We need to feel for the adjuster star. There it is. We'll start adjusting. 
So we want to, the star's in there, we're going to be turning it this way. And then once it, uh, once you can't turn it anymore, you'll notice that the disc is now locked. That's because the emergency brake shoes are set tight against the hat of the disc. But we want to back that off just slightly. So just enough where the disc will move. But not too much, because if you back it off too much, it's gonna take all the travel out of your, your emergency brake pedal when you push the pedal down. We want it so that as soon as you start pushing the pedal down, it's engaged, not right to the floor, and it barely engages. Take this cover, it just pops right in here. It's kind of important to have that, it just keeps moisture out even though it's not a sealed system. All right, we're gonna clean all this corrosion off of the back of the rims. It's very important to clean this all off. If you do not, what can happen is, as you tighten your wheel down and start to drive the vehicle, the corrosion can shift and move and the rim will settle onto the face of the, the spindle. Uh, I guess it would be onto the, uh, the disc, but the wheel nuts can loosen off. So very important that we keep this clean to achieve proper torque and maintain proper torque. Okay, we put our wheel on now. And uh, we got our wheel nuts started. Now take note that these wheel nuts have washers on them. These are for the alloy wheels. If you use Toyota alloy wheels, you need these wheel nuts. Um, now these washers that are on here need to be able to move freely in order to achieve proper torque with these wheel nuts. They get torqued to 76 foot pounds. And if they are seized, uh, the wheel nuts just going to drag as you're torquing the wheel nuts down and you may not achieve proper torque. So that's a very important step. And All right, now we're just gonna torque these wheels. 76 foot pounds. And there we go. All right, uh, if you have any questions, throw them down in the comments below. I'd be glad to answer them. If you like this content, give the video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button.